is going on everybody and welcome to this episode of From Morning to Action Powerfully Working Through Loss. I am your host Dr. Damon Silas and I am so thrilled to have my next guest on today. This brother, I actually have grown up with him dancing in the DC area but even more importantly I saw him grow from a young man into well an older man (laughs) no but I, I saw him you know just develop into this amazing young man that you'll hear me talk to today he currently is an ICU trauma nurse up in the New Jersey area and my brother's name is Terrence Polite TP uh, Terrence, do me a favor and say hello to the people out there. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? How you guys doing? Welcome, man. It's it's so great to have you as part of the show. Finally, I know we've tried a couple times to get you on here, and um, the time is perfect, though. Do me a favor and tell the people a little bit about yourself, something that I may have missed. So I am a uh, 32-year-old healthcare professional. Um, as Damon said, we pretty much grew up dancing together back in the D.C. area. Um, and kind of going into the whole lost thing, I was a professional dancer. Um, my life was surrounded in, in terms of the entertainment industry for years. Mm-hmm. So after I graduated from nursing school, um, I went and I pursued my, my career in the entertainment industry and I toured with various artists from Beyonce to Kelly Rowland and choreographed for, uh, Brandy, Genuine, you know, um, the music videos, I did some movies, um, I was an actor, I was one of the lead actors in Stomp the Yard in the second one. Mm-hmm. That's right, I forgot about that role. Mm-hmm. And then um, I was actually pursuing my music career as well, <clears throat> mm-hmm. until things uh, kind of went south. And um, so now I am, um, I thank God that I had a mom that stayed on me to finish and to get my education, and to have that quote-unquote backup plan, because it was very imperative. And, and so now I am... Um, practicing as a registered nurse, as a trauma surgical ICU nurse, and um, I'm excited about life and just where, where things are going and how everything's coming full circle. Man, th- uh, and thank you for sharing that. You know, and even as as you were talking about your background, I forgot about some of your credits. Right, like I I knew about them. Um, I saw you on TV, and it was one of those issues where I was like, Oh man, I know him. <laughs> like it was, like, <laughs> you know, it was, it's so cool to like see somebody that you know. And and to and to then see you pursue a passion of yours so strongly, you know, and and um, you were just in it, and you said, you know, obviously with the loss, what was that like for you in those moments? So I'll, I'll give a pretty uh, broad. Uh, I'll give you guys a pretty good depiction of what happened. So I'm this young, motivated, passionate guy, really super passionate about the arts. My life mm-hmm. was just drowned I ate slept and and literally breathed the arts and dancing and singing and music and acting and anything that had to do with it Mm -hmm. um so to be able to get to that level of a quote-unquote professional dancer um it it took a lot of perseverance and of course a lot of blood sweat and tears and that was my passion that was my dream and all of a sudden um after years of, of pursuing it I actually remember Damon when I got my first job with Genuine and we were in Culture Shock rehearsal and I came and told you Um, And at this time, I was still in school, and my mom said, uh, she said, no, you're not going on tour. You're going to finish school. But little did she know that I went behind her back and talked to all my professors and still went on tour. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, Mom. (laughs) Worked it out. Right, right. So in in August of 2012, I was stabbed, and um, I basically bled out and... uh, went to a, a fatal heart rhythm which we call is PEA pulseless electrical activity mm-hmm. which means my heart had some activity some electrical activity but I didn't have a pulse um, mm. so in order to revive me they had to do multiple things one which was a massive blood transfusion um, and CPR of course um, so I literally did die um, I lost my pulse and by the grace of God I was able to be resuscitated mm. um, so to fast forward things a little bit um, I ended up in the ICU, ironically, um, for about five weeks, and um, it was a it, it was it was it was definitely definitely life changing, and I felt lost in so many different aspects. Um, so first and foremost, when I woke up at the time, I think I was twenty seven, twenty six. Um, my whole life, when I tell my foot to move, it moves. 
When you mm-hmm. tell your hand to move, it, it moves. And when I woke up out of this coma, my left foot was paralyzed. Mm. And, I, and I couldn't understand why, and the doctors didn't really understand why. Um, I had some complications, and I actually um, almost lost my leg. They almost, my mom actually signed the consent to amputate ah, the leg. Wow. Um, but um, it was either life or limb at that, ch- at that point. And um, mm-hmm. luckily, and by, by God's grace, I came back with my leg. So being a dancer, I lost my physical ability, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Um, I lost my, my, my well-being and my health. Mm-hmm. I lost my financial st- uh, stability and my ability to make money and to create income. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was very angry. And I lost faith in God for a second as well because I couldn't understand why it would be me. Um, mm. you know, I consider myself a, a, a great person that's always giving back and I think it was just one of those cases where sometimes bad things happen to good people um, mm-hmm. but I think the most important thing and the most the biggest struggle was the loss of my identity right. and I no longer knew who I was I, w- I was always TP the dancer TP's on tour TP's on MTV T- uh, I saw TP with Beyonce uh, TP's doing this or I was working on my album I was uh always networking and just drowned in the entertainment industry and that's how I saw myself um, mm. that's all I saw for myself so even when mom said um, you need a backup plan I'm like a backup plan for what? Oh. <laughs> right well, I got <laughs> this <laughs> I'm planning to fall back on anything mm. Uh, mm. mom always knows huh? I know right I know uh, I thank God for her um, mm. so I lost myself and I no longer knew who I was anymore and I think that was the most devastating aspect of everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. Um, well, I'm, I'm just going to interject for a moment. So w- when you break it down like that, you know, it's uh, so many losses, including a literal loss of life to the point where you were in a coma, you know, loss of limb, loss of, you know, even the knowledge and awareness of how to work or ability to work those limbs. Um, but as you said, that identity, so, so many times people get wrapped up in their identity of what they do and that's not necessarily who they are. Preach brother. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm following your lead <laughs> at this point, <laughs> you know, but it, it, it's, you had that opportunity to then recreate and start, you know, from a new essentially, and you had to, you, you didn't necessarily have a choice at that point. So I want to talk a little bit about how do you even go from literal inaction, you know, from not being able to use and move your limbs to where you are today, which is that ICU nurse, as you said, uh, how ironic, because even um, we were talking before, I forgot that was a plan that you had before. And that was something that you had been working on before all of this happened. It just so happens that was the field you also were interested in. Exactly. It, it's yeah. it's amazing how the universe kind of brings things full circle for us, and sometimes you know not in the ways that we desire exactly. or would want to. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about how you took action. So even when you look at this action plan, and you you think about the A, which is affirmations, and what did you say to yourself, or what do you continue to say? Because this is a process, and it's not something that has a finish line. You know, um, what did you say? What do you continue to say to yourself, even in those dark moments, even in those moments where you doubt yourself or you, where you are and versus where you want to be? I mean, there's a whole litany of, of, of things. One of the biggest things that I think sticks out to me most is um, I had to realize that this experience and this journey, it was so much as much as it was about me. It wasn't about me. It was it's much bigger than me. Oh, man. And I say that meaning through my experience and, and, and through grief and through loss and through persevering and trying to get back on my feet and learning how to walk again, um, being in a wheelchair for, for a while, um, mm. <clears throat> just struggling with so many things. I didn't even know, but I was inspiring people along. I was inspiring people, you know, not even knowing that I was doing it without trying to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that was part of the beauty in it that I started to see that it really wasn't about me. Um, it was so much bigger than me, and I knew that it was a purpose, a bigger purpose. I had a bigger destiny, and it took me a while to realize that because, as I said, I lost my identity. So now I was at a point where, you know, what is my purpose? What, what is my destiny? 
Mm -hmm. Um, But I knew that my purpose and my destiny had not yet been fulfilled. And that's why God gave me a second chance. You know, most people only get one chance in life. And I'm here on my second go round. Right. As they say, you know, God wasn't through with me yet. Yep. Uh, Yep. So that was a big affirmation or something that I constantly said to myself and still say to myself that, you know, I knew that. I had a bigger purpose. There's a bigger I had purpose. A, bigger, uh, a destiny, and that this really wasn't about me. That it was much bigger than me in terms of the lives and the people that I was going to affect with my story. Hmm. You know, and that actually reminds me of just the whole concept of um, our egos. And once you started to realize, once you started to remove your ego from your whole process you started to see the impact that you were having on everybody else and and like you said that's a a huge realization to come to of it's bigger than me it's hard for some people to to get to that space of it's bigger than me or it takes a long time for some people let me ask you this in terms of creativity i'm curious about this this part because what you are saying is as an artist you know, as somebody who is always moving, always acting, dancing, etc. What did you notice with your creativity in those moments? Oh, man. <clears throat> it was a big conflict of interest. It was a huge conflict of interest because that's who I was. My life was indulged in being a creative person and creating so many different, whether it was writing, choreographing, you know, um, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. So, um, for a long time, I avoided anything having to do with it. I neglected it. I wanted nothing to do with create mm. the whole creative process. Um, for me, dance was my segue or my um, into the other art forms, into acting, into singing. Mm-hmm. And when I lost that ability to be able to dance, I wanted nothing else to do with the entertainment industry. I wanted nothing to do with my friends who were still um, dancing on the BET and MTV awards. I, I wouldn't watch those shows. Um, mm-hmm. I wouldn't go to concerts anymore. So it was kind of a, um, it was like I said, it was a big conflict of interest. However, there have been times where I have gone back into my creative process in which it was very therapeutic. Can you say more about that? Um, so there's times when I've when I've written music, um, um, really angry songs, and I just had to get it out. I wrote a song called "Stupid Motherfucker." Uh huh. And it was about the devil um, who was trying to get the best of me. Mm. And, and I was basically just teasing him and letting him know that, you know, no matter how much he tried, that he was a stupid motherfucker and there was no way that he was going to win. Not today. Not today. <laughs> so I, I still I still struggle with that in terms of the whole creativity thing. Um, but I still have a huge passion for music. Um, I'm not pursuing my music career as a singer anymore, but I still write. It's still therapeutic. Okay. I record, um, and um, and I use that to to get through sometimes. So it's it's not that you're no longer creative. It's just it looks a little different right now, and you've had to take a little break from it. You know that, <clears throat> and I think um, even when we go through some sort of loss. We it reminds me of a conversation I was having with a young lady earlier today who lost her father uh, just over a year ago. And she said, you know, my therapist wanted me to put a picture of him up on my wall. Um, She said, I still haven't done that. And this is a year and a half later. And I was thinking, well, yeah, right. Like sometimes you're not ready to get right back into those reminders. Exactly. Those triggers. Those triggers. Right. And so, you know, hearing you say that, that it makes complete sense to me. Well, speaking of, you know, even uh, when we talk about therapy, but even just the whole process of talking to people about it, like, what has your process been like? Have you talked to, whether it's a professional, family, friends, people who you can confide in, who have you talked to, if anybody, and when you do, what have you noticed with that? I've talked to any and everybody, including Dr. Damon Silas himself. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, sir. Um, I think that's one of the most important things that you can do is to talk to somebody. Um, Because Mm -hmm. there's so much that you just have to get off your chest. And and, and leaving it and allowing it to fester and to build up is just kind of...